Capital Community Television, in cooperation with the United States Australian Football League, presents the 2016 USAFL Regional Tournament from Salem, Oregon. Today's match features the Portland Steelheads and the Sacramento Suns. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Brian Barish alongside Anthony Lally. Great to have you along for another game of Australian Rules Football. This is the second of nine games that we'll be bringing you today here on CCTV. Uh, we have uh, two men's divisions and this is a Division II matchup between the 10th best, or rather the 11th best team in the USAFL, the Sacramento Suns, and the 17th ranked team, the Portland Steelheads. Anthony, you're pretty familiar with both of these teams, especially the, the Steelheads. What are you looking forward to here? in this match so you know he's a standout uh he's a superstar i love watching him play martin coventry the derwent destroyer mm -hmm. uh he'll be in jersey seven for the steelheads today he's uh He's approaching, I think, 160 or 170 USAFL games. I was going to say about 458. 458. Yes. So, um, <laughs> and you know, he he is a, he's a rock for this club. There's obviously a lot of new players as well. I'm very excited to see some of the the new young talent. Um, Seth Wright, the club president, who's going to play ruck today. Uh, he has really developed well the last two or three years as a player. And uh, I'm just, you know, the, the guys are excited to host this in Oregon, too. So I, I know they're, they're pumped for a big showing this weekend. Now, the Sacramento Suns hosted the regionals last year, yes. uh, the Western Regional. And uh, they're led by a, probably the best defensive player in the entire USAFL, one of them anyway, and Saleh Tayyab, G yes. number six. And uh, he is he's one of those players who, and we saw this in the women's game, if you happen to have caught the women's game, uh, who is uh, very good at uh, uh, playing defense but has free license to come up through the middle of the field and wreak havoc up there. Yeah, I'm, and I'm excited to watch him play in person too. Uh, ha having seen some highlights, of course, and uh, I know, Brian, you you track some of these players well, but he's certainly a guy that I know the Portland team is, is looking out for really is a tough nut to crack. Indeed. So it should be a, a great game here as, uh, again, uh, these two teams, uh, the Suns last year were Division Two runners-up at the National Championships. The Steelhead are the defending National Division Three, three National Championships. Champions. Yeah, so 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 well placed. And as you said, the, uh, the rankings heading into this week, uh, they're, they're pretty close. And this tournament, of course, will have a, an impact on how the rankings look for the end of month post, which is due Monday week. So uh, the 27th. So, you know, it's exciting. I know that the rankings, you know, the, the guys will always play for a tournament win over rankings. They're sort of a, a, a side, uh, but it, it definitely shows where the, the teams are at. Yeah. The yeah, and the two other teams in the the two other teams in this uh, in this bracket in this division are the Seattle Grizzlies, uh, and um, the other team that's in this bracket. I'm sorry, no, there is one other yep. team. There's only three. And so here we go. We've got our wide angle shot. Our umps yep. ready here. So over to you, Brian. Here we go. As the umpire holds the spirit of this great game aloft, and we are underway. As knocked out of the middle, there is a 13 for uh, that's uh, Ed Manning, who's in on the ruck for Sacramento, up on that far side along. The the ground picked up by the Suns up on that far side. He'll leisurely jog back and throw that one onto the right foot inside uh, 50 for the first time. And the ball will roll, roll, and find the boundary line over there as the old man himself, number 12, John Golista, for the Portland Steelheads. So just to run over uh, really quickly what uh, this game is all about, the object is you want to kick the ball between those sticks on either side of the field. The Suns, who are in the red jerseys going from left to right, uh, are trying to kick the are kicking in that direction. And uh, they're trying to kick the ball between the two big sticks in the middle. That's a goal, a G, as you see. That's worth six points. They kick it between one of the big ones and one of the little ones on either side. That's a B, a behind, and worth one point. The T is the total score. Um, Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, no, so we can see, too, there's a lot of traffic, and we just have that out of bounds just to the right of the behind post. There's a lot of traffic on the field. There's 18 players on each side. So we have those grouped in in three lines across the field. That's where we get 15 of the players, and we have three uh, three on ballers. Uh, and there, you'll see them doing a lot of miles today, probably even in a shortened game, three and a half, four miles of running. There's a mark if the ball is kicked and it travels uh, 15 meters or more, and it's caught by a player on either team, it's a free kick. And the uh, mark was taken by Colby Campbell, who puts that one deep into the attacking zone. And then Golista again in there to clean up. Look at there's six steelhead jumpers right there. Punching it forward there is Traxel Tau for Sacramento. Here's Manning, tries a handball, he swung and missed. Remember, you can't 
throw in Aussie rules. And then he is tackled in there uh, is the number 30, uh, Ramsey Hadar for uh, Portland. So I've already seen uh, Manning's pace and, and footwork. So we'll see how things go down the right side here. I think he's relatively new. I don't recognize him. And there we have a contact in the ruck on uh, Hodder, uh, who is in there. And you can't, so when the ball goes up, you can't make contact below. It's got to be a clean contest to, to swat the ball. So here is Ed Manning, number 13. He handballs it off to Matt Bishop, who is the coach. That's a long kick in towards oh. goal. And it's off of hands, and then it goes over through the through the behind uh, area for one point. So there's the first score of the game, one nothing to Sacramento. Those posts are seven yards apart. 6.4 meters. 6.4 right. meters. Well, for those of you for those of you who follow metrics, and let's face right. it, who does? Right. And on a behind, the defensive team kicks it in, almost marked, juggled, and almost a nice mark taken there by uh, Luke Mooney over the top. He goes out to the far side, but Sacramento does a good job of hemming the ball in. It ping-pongs around. Over to get it is uh, 27 for Portland, who is Caleb Elliott. And then uh, Sacramento still trying to hem them in. And uh, the whistle, and we'll have a ball up. As uh, go ahead. So we've got uh, we've got some big, big, tall lumber here from the Suns. Yep. Uh, Fifty-five. Uh, Brian Lewis, the 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 big mitts with the big mitts. Yep. And uh, he's certainly getting up there. We saw him inside the, the, the goal square earlier, just on that behind, and he's certainly roving around, ready for some crumbs here off the top. Ball back in the air, goal Easter again uh, with the headband. I know his son played at one point. Uh, he still does. He's not here today, and that one is uh, picked up. There is uh, number four for Sacramento, which is uh, Tristan Boyer. Boyer with his left foot goes in, and it's marked defensively by the Steelheads. So when you have the ball, you can either run with it. You can run as long as you like, provided. Oh, oh. good contest in there by uh, Ramesh Baramond and uh Picking it up again is Tal. He kicks that one in towards the goal, but it's going out of bounds on the full, on the fly. So it'll be a free kick to Portland. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, a little bit of background on, on John Galista. He runs a uh, contracting company based out of Portland. He's, he's also on the Oregon State Contractor and Construction Board, and he did a lot of work here on field setup. So wow. puts in a lot of time to help the, grow the game in this area. Nice uh, attempt for the mark by Mooney. It was deflected, so that wasn't a mark. He's told to play on. Here is Tyabji, who and got Warden's a watch. On him. Great job to get to it. He's going to stay with it. And here is Tyabji, who handballs it into the middle. A good long handball and an effective one. He kicks that one inside. Almost marked in there by uh, by Brian Brewer. And then the ball goes to ground, but uh, Portland will try and get it out. They do uh, through Mooney up to the near side again, looking for Warden. Can't find him, and then finally does. He spun off the ball. Uh, everyone gets down, and uh, Seb Aguirre, who is the uh, Western Regional Vice President of the USAFL and has done a lot of work on this tournament, he's there, but it will be a ball up. Yeah, great. I mean, given the work that Seb's done, uh, it's amazing that he has everything so organized he's got time to play. So it's good to see him out there. <laughs> Manning comes flying through like a bat and fly and, and bats it out of there and then running through. But then here he comes again. There's that man Manning looking for Bishop. Couldn't find him. And then the ball goes to ground. We'll talk about Matt Bishop in a little bit. Well, I guess we'll talk about him now. Matt yes. Bishop was for many years. He actually began with the Baltimore Washington Eagles and then moved to Sacramento, helped found this club with his wife, Amy, who is very instrumental in the women's team that you just saw. Uh, and he was also the USA Revolution coach national team for several years, uh, coaching him to an eighth place finish at the 2014 International Cup. Ball is tied up, and we'll have another ball up. So as we mentioned, we started to mention you can run with the ball. Yes. Uh, you can. You have to bounce it to the ground like a basketball or touch it uh, every 15 meters or so. So about every 12 to 15 steps. If you ha uh, you can, uh, you're not allowed to throw the ball. You have to handball it out, like punch it like a volleyball, and you can kick it. Great tackle, and of course you can get tackled too. And down hurt. Oh yes. Behind the play there is a number. I, I thought three initially is what I see. No, he's rolling over. It looks like 31, Dave Quinn. The game continues, and at some point, I think they're going to have to stop it. But no, they're going to play on around him. So essentially, the Steelheads are down two, and now finally, as Quinn is slow to get up, the, the game was being played around him. And we're going to see it run here in a sec. I think he's hobbled. He probably just got a big cork or a Charlie horse yeah. uh, as he went up there on the around the hip or quad area. So he's going to walk that off. He's going to do his best. We'll see. But it looks like he's got his arm up. Meanwhile, the game continues, and Brewer picks it up on a hop. He handballs it into the middle for uh, Sham Sangara. Sangara will kick that one inside. 
And now they still have it. Finds Brewer again. Now they'll go inside. It'll roll. Picked up again and then getting free. Handballs it back again looking for Brian Lewis. Lewis kicks towards the stick. It's a hot nice shot. mark that by was Barmond. Yeah, that was well plucked out of the sky. He was under some pressure there from Warden. Matt Bishop has been really high on uh, Baramond. Uh, just picked up the game last year. He is very fast, and as you can see, he's a weapon. Very athletic. So this will be a chance, and you have a great shot of it from our camera, as Baramond will go in. The kick is up on the way. It's going to be close. Did it let's, sneak in? Let's see. Uh, our goal umpire is... Well, he's got to get the ball first. There I didn't see the signal, and it looks like it is, in fact, a goal. And you'll so see the two flags. Two flags. All right, so we've got a, a goal there. So we'll get Sacramento one goal, one behind seven. Two. So, two and here's our replay, uh, Brian. We'll see that in a moment. Yeah, this is uh, a great look from behind. It's very key here. The, the, the technique is one of the key fundamentals of Aussie rules. And you can see young Baramond executing them perfectly as he had a good drop and a good form on the follow-through. Okay, so we're getting formation here for the ball up. Yeah, so after a goal, the ball will come back into the center. The umpire will throw it in, and away we go again as the ball, once again, that was Lewis, and Lewis caught a knee to the stomach. I think he'll feel that in the morning. And after all of that, it's going to be a free kick to the Suns. And, in fact, that was called illegal contact in the ruck. So he'll float it out to the far side while he finds Matty Bishop. Bishop will go up on that far side looking for uh, another teammate. And somewhere on that far side, he finds them. Long kick inside. The ball is popped up in the air, and a good job by the steelhead defender to come around and get it. And then finally, that's Scott Johnson, who bangs it out up on the far side, looking for a teammate, and now finally finding one. Left-footed kick in the middle. Lewis again. He had two bites at the cherry. He'll go backwards with a handball, and then that one is kicked in towards the middle, picking it up on a hop, and then getting away from Warden, that's staying in nicely as a long kick as Campbell, and then a good defensive play to get away from Manning. Manning's going to stay with it, however, but it's picked up by Portland as 35 Ryan Coyle gets it away. Here comes Portland back the other direction. They're still marooned in their own territory. Good pressure there by Sean Sears, who is one of the better offensive pressure players in the league. And the ball will stay in bounds. Kicked in towards the middle. It'll one hop. It'll two hop. And Manning is there for Sacramento. He'll swarm on it, looking for help. He has it momentarily. Uh, he's taken down, and that's going to be uh, tackling without the ball. Unless you have clean possession of the ball, you cannot be taken down. That's a free kick, and Sacramento will have a chance to extend their lead. Portland giving them a few chances here, although they're putting them under a lot of pressure. They are, and it's just going to be a matter of if the Suns can convert. So here is the Suns now. I can't see who that is. But the kick is up on the way. It definitely has a lot in height. Not a whole lot in direction, but it has gone through for a behind. So one more point for Sacramento. They are on to one goal, two behinds, eight points. And Portland yet to score as we near the midway point of this first half. Brian Barish alongside uh, Anthony Lally. Glad to have you uh, along with us here in Salem as a handball went on. Here's Baramond again as he kicks oh, on into it. Bounce did a back, through. But it's going through for a behind. Oh. The, the, the tyranny of the bouncing ball. Some ways you get it, sometimes I, you don't. I tell you what, Campbell there, geez, a bully. <laughs> yeah. And 28 from the Suns. And here's a, here's a brief, uh, quick replay here. Rashad just had good close-down pressure. Gee, it was a wobbly one. Oh. I thought it was going to break back uh, a nice off-break there between the wickets. But... <laughs> <laughs> a little cricket for, and thankfully you're with two people that actually know about cricket. So nine to nothing is the score, and up on that far side it's marked as Portland trying to link some of these kicks together. Up on that far side, somewhere over there, and it's uh, now it's stolen and back the other way. There's a nice mark. Yes. So the Suns uh, have been to three consecutive national grand finals. Uh, and, of course, the Nationals this year is in Sarasota, Florida. Tal with a handball. Whoop. Uh, field's a little slippery. It's not terribly wet, but a lot of players that we've seen so far in both games that we've covered have had some trouble uh, with their, uh, with their uh, footing. Yeah, the overnight sprinklers and a little bit of overcast this morning. It just hasn't burned off yet, Brian. Yep. 
that uh, scoreboard over there can't possibly be correct. I just went by and it said 16-15. Ours is right. It's 9 nothing. Marked into the middle by Sacramento by uh, Colby Campbell, who yes. had a mark. Oh, that's a pretty good kick. That's going to come up short, but that's a good lead as the ball is knocked down. And then uh, Portland has a chance to get out here. Seth Wright, he is uh, pushed in the back, not called, by uh, number nine in there, which was Sean McEachern. And then uh, Portland able to keep with it. And now up on that far side, here again is... Is um, Hadar, Ramsey Hadar, Hadar, and then finally picked up again by Campbell. Colby Campbell looks up on that oh. far side. Oh, big Look hit. Look popped into play. Oh, but it just stays in play. And then they're going to throw a Shepard. Good job. And then right, it looked like, got it onto his left foot, looking for Aguirre, who couldn't handle it. And now a long kick for Sacramento, looking for Manning. No, couldn't get to it. Good job. But they're going to. I think they're going to call Golista for hands in the back. And they are. So you can't push somebody in the back, and then even if you place the hand on the back, more times than not, you're going to get the call. Yeah, the ump's really looking for a big shove. Um, you know, as the, the gamers get around to a little bit more, you might see some, uh, some reaches and nudges. But, yeah, they're going to be all over that. They want really clean contests. So though. here is Ed Manning, who in the spirit of American athletes playing in that ruck position. There's a couple of, uh, sprinkled around the USAFL. Donald Lee, who plays for Los Angeles, is not here. There's a handball on to Bishop. That's a good option play. Oh, good job, and oh. they're just going to rush that through for a behind. That was a low, hard trajectory, oh. and it nearly snuck through. A little too low and a little too hard, and, and uh, it is legal to uh, bat the ball through your own goals like that. It is a behind. Yeah, forced behind. So we have one more. We see the score now. One goal, four, ten. Yep. 10 nothing. as we check it out on the replay. So there is that option. Uh, Manning could have taken the kick, and I think Bishop, sensing that his uh, relative newcomer uh, teammate uh, probably would have struggled with the distance, he uh, made himself an option and kicked the ball. Unfortunately, it didn't come off. And play continues. We've got Sacramento in possession now. Suns pop it up through to the center, and who have we got there on a clean mark? It looks like uh, Tom Avester. And he was cleaned up a little bit. He copped a high one, but he took the mark, so we'll and get the free kick anyway. Yeah, no, and I'm not sure of his range, so we'll see. We're, we're, we're probably 40-odd meters. I uh, think he's got it from here. Let's see. He's going to go in short where he had a lead, and he's got ooh. No, he almost took the mark. He fooled the heck out of me. Yes. Portland will have a chance to clear. And again, there's Lewis. And here comes Campbell again out on the right side looking for Baramond. But that came off the back of Caleb, Caleb Elliott, Elliott, who I don't think was playing the ball. Keeping it with it is uh, Ivester again. He kicks that one in short, but it's uh, uh, taken defensively. Play on, says the umpire, as uh, Manning goes in to harass uh, uh, Aguirre again, uh, the Portland player, and then picked up does the, uh, the steelheads. But, oh, oh, an uncontested mark by Tristan Boyer. And that was just desperation, and sometimes you get burned. So Boyer will go back, and the Suns will have a chance to extend their lead. So here it is from not much of an angle to speak of. Call this about 40 yards dead in front. The kick is up on the way. It looks like it's tailing left. It's tailing quite left. In fact, it has gone out, of out on the full. So uh, Got a free kick from Portland to restart play. One of my Aunt Becky's cookies. It uh, looked pretty good coming out of the oven, but crumbled into nothing at the end. As we take a look at uh, it again. A nice reverse angle so we can... Uh, so it looks like the drop was good, uh, Anthony. It yes. just looked like that he came across with the follow-through. Just that's off what, the inside a little bit. A little hook for you golf friends. So we're back to live action here. Great to have you along once again. This Western Regional Tournament, by the way, as we're going to call it back, I wonder... No, I think they're going to – or did he step out of the square? He may have. He may have. He so may there, have, is, Brian, there so is a goal square. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, no, I was going to say, so there's a 10-meter section out uh, in front of the center goal. So, Brian, you may want to uh, – Elaborate here. So we're going to have a ball up. So ball up from straight in front. We'll explain the call in a moment. As Manning can't get to it, Sacramento, and then it's a team Jeez, picture, a and it looks like a rugby mall. Mate, that's a mall big time. That is a mall, and we'll have uh, we'll have a ball up. So there's that ball on, on a kick-in when the, when the team um, – actually, no, because that went out of bounds on the full. So it looked like it would have been a ball the mark. kick. Yeah. So it's a little bit like uh, when a goalkeeper gonna, is going to walk out past the goal kick and, and touch the ball. It's going to be a free kick. In to soccer, the opposition. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now on a goal. Now on a, on a kick in after a behind. It, that's when that box comes into oh. play and they can't lead it. And once again, Portland having trouble finding their targets, and uh, Sacramento once again with an opportunity here. Again, up ten to nothing. The kick is long and strong into the popcorn machine. Uh, 
Ty of G was in there, a little uh, cameo Here forward. Here's Coventry, and he is Cons shoved over the line. That is a point that will be scored to the Suns, so it's 11 to nothing. Yeah, forced behind, and, and you know, Coventry's dropped back. He's really trying to help out some of his less experienced teammates. As we see the pressure in front, it was a good kick set up. Uh, uh, good front. scrap. Good scrap. As uh, we're uh, we're keeping an eye on live play, as the, you see the rush behind, uh, there is uh, Sacramento with uh, number 12 with it. There's, oh, Bomber on. Did he Big. get him without the ball? No, he didn't. It doesn't matter. They'll play on. That's Tristan Boyer. The kick came off the side of his foot. Guallista is in there, kept on there by uh, by McKecker. Oh, it rumbles through and a big hit by right Sham Segura. It's a great tackle and it's a free kick. Sham Segura, who I believe this is his second or third year with the Suns and a good layout of a hit. So Segura is going to line this yes. up. He's uh, not far off center. Maybe 30 meters out. So we 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 have a legitimate scoring attempt here. Their accuracy's been off the last couple. Let's see how he goes to split those sticks. So here he comes. He takes the run up. The kick is up on the way, and that one is tailing left. Mate, there isn't a puff of breeze. I think some no. of it's just stage fright. First I think game it's of the day. A little bit of the yips, and so that's the sixth behind squared by Sacramento. It's one six twelve. One goal, six behind, twelve points. In the words of the immortal Dennis Cometti, they'd be kicking themselves, but they'd probably miss. Exactly. Here is the kick again, and once you once again you see the angle of the leg coming through on the follow through, uh, again belying uh, belying a nice drop. So as we're back to live action, it's two goals though. It's two straight kicks and Portland is in it, but they really haven't. I don't think they've been inside the opponent's 50-meter area. They haven't They haven't got past the center square, Brian. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and that's going to be key. And Portland generally pretty good at stringing some of these together. But go. Sacramento, here is, uh, I believe that was, no, it wasn't Coventry, but it is a long kick looking for right. And, hey, look, they got their first chance inside 50. That's that 50-meter arc so around the goal. Right. Here's right as he's able to get away. Oh, great brush. Great job. Here's a kick in towards the sticks. Oh, oh they both fell down. It's going to roll. It's Open still in goal. play. And it's rushed over the line. Yes, it has been. Conceded it was behind. Conceded for a behind. And there is Terry Tupper waving one flag, meaning one Ooh. point. But finally, Portland is on the board. It's 12-1. to so we, some of the names we talked about before the game, we've seen get a little bit uh, busier with the ball. Here's a quick replay. Now there's no, as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, there's no offsides, there's no real restrictions on where the players can go. And sometimes, you, especially on the counterattack with Sacramento pushing up, uh, that goal square is left empty. And, and that's exactly what happened there. And uh, they almost got burned with a goal, but thankfully uh, uh, for them at least, uh, Portland was only able to come away with the one behind as we're back to play action. And Portland, here they come again. They've got the notion, they've got the feeling. And there's a nice mark by the Tazzy boy himself, Martin Coventry. He'll look out in the middle of the ground. It'll one hop into Aguirre. Oh, and he's hit by, uh, I didn't know, it uh, uh, looks like there by, uh, by Chris Gould for Sacramento. And we have a free kick as it looks like it was a high tackle. So free kick coming back to it looks like Caleb Elliott. So here is their first real legitimate chance for a goal here. And there's not much of an angle to speak of. Uh, not the greatest of drops though. And it's nicely marked back there by the scrap of human flypaper, uh, Saleh Tayabji. So sticky, oh. those mitts. I'll tell you what, as he finds Bishop up on the far side. So the US played Canada in the 49th Parallel Cup last year. Uh, and I believe that is us. It is halftime. We'll it get to us. that. We'll get to that story in just a moment. But uh, that's a, a pretty entertaining first half. It was mostly Sacramento, but Portland was able to get some uh, momentum in the set in the end of that half. Though. Yeah, and, and Brian, a few names that maybe we didn't consider before before the match that we've seen get busy with the Suns. I mean, Boyer's had a few good touches. The four, uh, Manning has been busy, yes. even though he's new to the game. He's mm -hmm. he's certainly uh, getting up there, contesting well. One thing we notice about the Suns is. They, they definitely like to control possession in the air, mm -hmm. and Portland's strength is probably the handball game in terms of disposal. So they're definitely well drilled in, in getting up. They've got good height, and they've got good uh, vertical leap, and we've seen that. They've really got nice straight arm, nice leap off the ground, taking marks, even even without pressure. Yeah. So you can tell that's a good sign of that that coaching with, uh, you know, Matt, Matty Bishop mm -hmm. uh, 
drilling them well on those those elements of the game. It's the ground game versus the air game, if That's you right. will, a little bit of a of a, gra of a uh, gridiron reference. So uh, a pretty good, as we mentioned, the first of three games from this particular division with uh, the Seattle Grizzlies, which we'll see a little bit later on. Uh, pretty entertaining first half. The score once again, the Sacramento Suns 12, the Portland Steel heads 1. Uh, we'll be right back after this. If you like what you're watching, the USAFL, and want to check out what's going on, take a look at this video and see what this game's all about. We'll be right back for the second half of this one from Salem. Support for tonight's program was provided by MAPS Credit Union, premier sponsor of Salem-Kaiser Schools. Visit one of our convenient locations in the Willamette Valley or our website, mapscu.com. And by Les Schwab Tire Centers, doing the right thing since 1952. Experience the Les Schwab difference at your neighborhood Les Schwab Tire Center or visit us on the web at lesschwab.com. competition and a feeder competition there to the AFL. You're the truest form of an athlete playing footy. You got to cover long distances, got to be able to have endurance, be quick, athletic, sprint, be strong, uh, and have skill at the same time. And uh, I think that if you fancy yourself an athlete, this is a sport. Well, everyone plays offense and, and defense and everyone is a skilled player. You need to have reasonable endurance, reasonable speed, reasonable strength. There's no restrictions on how tall you need to be. Some guys can be, you know, high six feet. Some people are in their five, you know, five foot five. So it doesn't discriminate against anyone. Anyone can play. The thing that Americans would find uh, particularly exciting about it is the fact that it's so fast paced. Um, the, the game's continuous, it doesn't stop, the game just continues to keep rolling. Future of the game, I think that we need to get into more colleges. You look at a team like Minnesota and what they're able to do with college scholarships. You know, kids going over to Australia for a semester and then come back and they're, they're helping with Minnesota's team. I, I think that's where our real development's going to come in and I, you know, I think we need to really foster the college game. It's a sport that's really growing, not only in Australia, but all around the world. And There's been a few signings of, of young American college players in the last few years that have uh, made the transition to our sport and done really well. So a wide range of ages and fitness levels and it's really a sport for anybody. So I looked up Aussie Rules on YouTube and I thought it was really cool and that's how I found out about it. It brings together certain elements from all different sports. Sometimes you might not be the top 1% of a particular sport but you can use what you know about that sport and it all is applied very well in uh, Aussie Rules football. Uh, just check out if there's a club in your local area and from my own experience, both Aussies and Americans in the club are really welcoming and they took good care of me, so they'll definitely look out for you and it's a good time. Yeah, welcome back to the Capital FC Soccer Complex here in Salem, Oregon. We're at halftime of this USAFL Western Regional match between the Sacramento Suns and the Portland Steelheads. The Suns up by 12 points, but uh, not for the want of accuracy uh, in the first half so far, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, plenty of uh, attacking, uh, attacking action in front of the goal mouth within the 50. Uh, six behind, so I'll be a little bit disappointed with the accuracy. But, the you know, the skill execution was good and, you know, the aerial game was good. A couple other players we're talking about on the on the break uh Baramond had a had a strong half and he was another player that you know, we knew of but he really stood out um so we're just going to see some clips here in a moment there's Manning nice handball away here's some of the uh the attempts at goal. Ed, Ed Manning, who has done a fantastic job in the rock for the Sacramento team. Both of these teams have uh, uh, both of these teams have a lot of new players. As you hear the uh, the Golden Gate Ruse warming up in front of us. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you, you see some of these chances, and and you know what? Um, as we mentioned, uh, we mentioned uh, Dennis Cometti's line. You know, they'd be kicking themselves, but they probably miss. But our buddy Bill Robert, who does uh, a show called Stateside Footy, and is a uh, also a pretty big American fan. His first law of footy is you kick too many behinds, you get your behind kicked. Exactly. So it's just going to be a matter of, let's see if uh, Portland can make uh, can make up for that here in the second half, if they can get some chances forward. Well, and, and Portland did have a few chances, just they probably don't have the length or accuracy just yet um, on, on those attempts. So you know, they'll be ready to bounce back and, and fight hard through this next half of football. We've seen this club is, is quite gritty. Yes. You know, they're, they're, they're a gritty group and they certainly don't back off. So I'm expecting, uh, you know, them to keep the heat on and mm -hmm. hopefully control possession a little bit more. We've seen them be dispossessed many times. Yes. 
Now we've seen, now we were talking about the national championships. Of course, this is one of three regional tournaments that the USAFL hosts. Uh, we hosted uh, back in uh, June, uh, June 11th in Indianapolis, Indiana, we had the Central Regionals. Uh, a couple weeks ago on June 25th, we had the Eastern Regionals. That was in Yonkers, New York. And of course, the national championships, that's the big one in October when all the teams come in, October 15th and 16th in Sarasota, Florida. Heading into that tournament, so Portland uh, won the Division Three national champion, defeating the Ohio Valley River Rats. That's one of my favorite names uh, last year, uh, pretty convincingly 37 to nine in the final. Now we talked about Sacramento. Uh, they went to the division three uh, grand final in 2013, lost in controversial fashion to the Houston Lone Stars, came back to defeat the Philadelphia Hawks pretty handily 43 to five in 2014. And then last year, uh, unexpectedly, I think, it took a lot of people by surprise, went all the way to the Division II Grand Final and lost to the Quebec Saints 27 to nothing. but that yeah. too was not for the lack of trying against the Quebec team that was really, really uh, strong going forward. Um, so we'll see what happens. Both teams know how to win. Both teams are, are very experienced at playing these uh, these type of tournaments, especially you look at their leaders on both sides. Yeah, and I was just, just uh, making a point, actually. The Portland team still looks pretty calm and composed, and uh, we saw Martin Coventry leading the, the huddle there amongst the senior players just ready for the ball up. So, you know, I think they know what they need to do. They've got a, a less experienced group, of course, but, you know, they'll just try and keep it simple and really try and uh, get some continued possession. We started to talk about Saleh Taibji for the Suns at the end, and uh, just that story, the USA-Canada match, the 49th Parallel Cup in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Canada had a had, was down and had all the scoring chances, and Taibji took about 15 marks to save the game. Back here, second half underway, the Suns with an 11-point lead, and Manning won the hit out, but did not to advantage. And then, uh, oh, good shepherd thrown in there by, uh, by Nathan Meltzer for Sacramento, who's able to spring Manning, who finally gets to it, and before he finally does, He's wrapped up. He just gets his boot the ball. It's a rain bringer. Down it goes. It pops around like a Mexican jumping bean or at least like an Oregonian jumping bean. And then Coventry looks out to the near side. He puts it on a bit of a string for his uh, uh, for his uh, teammate. And then uh, just Boyer. getting away by Helwig, who found Boyer. Boyer will go into the middle. It pops around. And then uh, Portland able to get to it. Coventry just arrived a step too late. Manning gets to it on a couple of hops. Uh, oh, Coventry's gone. Well He's gone. Yes, well, great, good tackle. Great, great tackle. Manning there tried to get out of jail, and he's the most uh, fancy fl f fleet footed man on the uh, Suns team. He just couldn't escape the clutches. But he was in the clutches of probably the most experienced man on the other team, but that finds right into the hands of Tyabji, who we were just talking about. So Tyabji is going to calm down. He has about six or seven seconds before he is told to play on. He gets it off. He's looking to the near side, two on one contest just over the head of Yara Mignon. And uh, he just gets it forward. Aguirre is going to run on to it, the former o Orange County bomber. And then getting free of that is number 12 for Sacramento. Long kick. It'll hop in looking for Sangara. And then uh, picking it up there is uh, D. Snyder. I loved him in Twisted Sister. And he's taken down, I think it's Dave, I think, or something. But he's in here as D. Snyder. And they get the ball away. Oh, right into the, right into the midst of uh, Scott Hensley, who is right there. And he is slow to get up as Hensley. Meanwhile, play continues up on that far side. Going after to get Warden. it is uh, Warden as he is taped by Making Traxel Tau. Break. Great job by Warden who showed a little bit faster speed but then uh, almost marked there by uh, Colby Campbell. He is uh, oh. thrown around and then picking it up nicely there is uh, Adam Law and Bowlby. Bowlby will kick that one in towards the sticks but it's marked defensively and that ends that as Kendall Hutchings ends the threat. That was a little bit better from the Steel Oz. Yeah, a little bit better from the steelheads Sorry, there. Steelhead, steelheads. Well, they have steel you know, eyes. The whole thing is steel. The, it's all fish. It's all. It's streams. all fish to it's me, all baby. It's all upstream, right? So here is. Uh, There's Manning again. Here's Manning for the Suns as they lead 12 to one. Long kick, almost, oh. Mark, crash, boom, opera, and there's going to be a call in all of that. And uh, onward go the Suns, up that far side, again looking for Mignon. And then uh, it goes away over to chase after it is Baramond, who had that nice mark uh, in the, uh, for the, towards, to, led to the goal in the first half. 
And so there is actually what, what's nice looking down the roster of the Suns. There is a, a a large majority percentage of U.S. players on on the Suns team. There's there's not a lot of uh, imports. No, and and you can say that about a few of the teams around the league. I think in the West Coast, there's a lot of Aussies living out here, as I'm sure you can speak from the voice of experience. Yes. Uh, but you look at some of the Midwestern teams: Des Moines, Columbus, Tulsa. Uh, among them, there's a lot of uh, Amer is mostly Americans, and that's actually really good to see. Um, you know, it's good to see Aussies involved in in the game and in the startup of the game, but to see some of these Americans take charge. Uh, and and you, as you mentioned here, with the Americans that are as involved in the game as they are, uh, to, to step up in the leadership roles among these teams, even with all the Australians, is a good sign. Manning up on that far side, and it's marked defensively there. I believe that was by Hatar. 12-1 to the score. Brian Barish alongside Anthony Lolly. Great to have you along here on CCTV, the Western Regional Tournament. This is the first game of Division Two. It's a three-team round robin, two 20-minute halves. The Seattle Grizzlies, you'll see them play a little bit later on against these two teams. Of course, we have Division One action, and we have a women's uh, with, well, Division One has four teams in it. Uh, the three of, uh, four of the top six teams in the USAFL you'll get to see as well as part of this series, as well as some great women's competition with uh, four teams there as well. So we see play trying to get trying to get moving a little stop start. Uh, we've just got you know plenty of crumbs on the ground. Everyone's scratching away. Honey pot football it seems like with everyone around the ball, but it looks like a free kick has been awarded. I did not see the signal for what for. So they're going to give a handball off, and then uh, here's Bishop who looks like he's the kicking specialist on some of these. Uh, and well spoiled by Elliot. Yeah, great job by Caleb Elliot. He keeps it in, going on that far side, and here is. Uh, um, Mignon again. I was going to call him Gagnon, but it's Mignon. Oh, Coventry, and then he was copped high. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a free kick for high contact as Coventry threw himself at the ball. He's got a lot of space on this near side of the field and said, decides to go long up the crowded corridor. Nice spoil there. Uh, and then a long ball, but uh, here's uh, Mignon again. He's taken down and just got it away, but right to a sun player. And then he's tied up and he's thrown to the ground. And then a second attempt, and that one is nurdled through. And then just getting tackled and just getting to the ball is the so man in the goggles break. there. Here they go. They're queuing up, but then that crumbles into nothing again. Long kick, and that's going to be a tackle behind play, it looks like. Yes, he checked him after the kick. So uh, are they we, paying? we might get a play on. We might get a play on. It looks like they've paid advantage, and it ended up being a mark here to, uh, to tie up G. So here is Taibji who will look. He'll throw that into the middle. A one-on-one -on -one contest as the big flyers fly, but the ball ends up on the carpet. And picking it up again is Ryan Coyle. He looks out to the near side at a one-hop. Throwing himself at it again was uh, was um, Boyer. And then he handballs it back as Sacramento tries to go again. And a nice open mark by Sangara. He's going to run on unimpeded and kick a nice goal. Great job by Sangara to lose his man. It looked like uh, John uh, Golista who was there. But the second goal of the game by the Suns and they extend their lead. That takes them on to two goals six behinds, 18 points. Portland still just the one behind. Great passage of play and maybe a little bit of a defensive lapse there by the by the Steelheads. Yeah, we had uh, we had a good exchange of possession. Here's a, is a quick update on the uh, replay. Yeah. Really under no pressure. Yeah, and as you can see, just losing Golista. Golista is definitely experienced, but I think uh, 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 Sangara was always going to win the foot race. So 18-1 to the score. It's a 17-point lead. Now, this is a round robin, as we mentioned, and each team is only going to be playing two games today, at least in this division. So if it comes down to a tie, if all three teams are 1-1-1, one, one, and one, the first is head-to-head, -head, but of course it'll be tied in head-to-head, -head, and then it'll come down to what's called points percentage which is goals for, I'm sorry, points for divided by points against. Uh, and uh, that'll be, uh, and so that'll be the tiebreaker. That might be what, uh, what decides it. But still a long way to go as Sacramento pushing forward again with Brendan Helwig. Longs that, lines that one through, but it's marked nicely by William Sandman. He says, I enter because I am Sandman and kicks it out to the near side. Up to the near side, can't juggle on. Baron just got to him. That could have been no. I think that was a clean tackle, and it's called as such. As Wright with a long handball back into the middle. As uh, 
number eight in there for the Steelheads is able to fend off Manning momentarily, but Manning gets through it. There's a long kick overhead. It pops up to Lewis. Lewis with a hand ba handball back to uh, Brian Brewer. Brewer is held up, and we have a free kick coming out as it was a good tackle, and it'll be a free kick to the Steelheads there in Ryan Coyle. Just getting the little breaks in the contest, aren't they? This. So uh, the umpire checking out that mark. So they need a little bit of the rub of the green on these contests. Yep. Here's a long kick in. It's a low line Ooh. drive. Coventry couldn't handle on to it. Oh, there was a uh, an interesting bump there. I believe that was by a tie of G. And then it's not a guy you want to run into. They they push it forward and then kept up on that far side there by a Gould. Gould will play that one on, but it is gone. Uh, it's marked by Coventry as he just kept the ball in play. So here is Martin Coventry. He'll go out long and kept in play by the Steelheads, oh. but it's picked off nicely by Boyer. Boyer is a miser. He'll throw that one up. It's almost juggled oh. and marked. And, uh, and they're calling they're for calling for a fair fit, catch. They're calling for well, they're calling for a, a, a fifty at the very least, a fifty meter penalty, but it's not coming. And another job, another great job by Coyle, who's starting okay, to strong himself. play on quickly from Coventry. He's pushing up the left side. Here they come. Snaps down, looking for Seth right at the front. He's got got him. Wow, he's got a nice mark. They need to play on quickly and keep pushing, Portland. Yeah, he's going to hold up, wait for some numbers, and then and they go in short, almost mark, goes straight to ground, picking it up again is. Uh, is a warden. He just got his hand, his foot to it. It's a scrambled backwards to Bishop. Bishop is held up before he can get rid of it. And then it's scrambled through Portland with a real chance here. But Sacramento says we're just going to sit on the ball so that we can get a ball up. There's a big trail of big trail of shell after that scramble. And in, in, in fact, a lot of oil on the ground. 18-1 to the score. Sacramento leading by 17 points. A Manning again. Oh. Manning is going to be one to watch in terms of midfield. And I'll tell you what, as the ball, as Taibji just gets that one up into the air, Ooh. almost marked by uh, the man in there, number 20, which is uh, Matt Nathan Weinstock. Someone who wore gla uh, goggles myself. Coventry goes Coventry for it, round through. to the left. Oh. Just punched through and over, but it's still in play. Great job, as you called there, Anthony, of Coventry running through. He is deceptively quick for a man who's 41, 42 yes. years old. I'll tell you what. So the uh, movement from Portland, that low game that we saw, got them, you know, from down the the far side of the field. We've got a quick dribble through on the ground. And I it's there. I think we've got our first goal. We've got our first goal for Portland. Nathan Gabe, 56. What a great job. And there it is. Picked we talked up the about ping pong. All, yep, all the momentum that they had grabbed. So... Portland gets their first major score of the game. That takes them on the 1-1-7. It's down to an 11-point game. Sacramento on 2-6-18. And they did need to score next to keep the, keep in this game, Brian. Yeah, and that's what so, they did here. And there it is right in front, Gabe. Oh, great job to get away. Wow. And he just got it off in the foot. Great composure to find boot the ball. And dead center perfect, splitting the big stick. So Portland had huffed and puffed, and they finally – blew one of the houses down for Sacramento and that cuts it back to an 11 point game. Yeah, 11 point spread, so within two goals, but Portland really need to score next again. Nice pick up. And Punch down through the midfield. Seth Wright pushing hard. Uh, 15 from Sacramento gets away. Oh, there's a bit of a slip. Stang Can go ahead. There's Wright. Seth Wright plucks it. Here we go. Up high towards the goal square. Cleanly taken. That's uh, 18 from the 19. Suns, Quokka. Matt o no, it's 19. Oh, 19 That's Matt O'Leary. That's all right, mate. It all looks the same from here, but it ends up ping-ponging and going backward, and there's a bear hug as the ball goes out of bounds. Bishop was there but couldn't prevent the ball. So another advantageous situation for the Steelheads. I'll tell you what, the uh, suspense is building here, Brian. I'm jumping out of my seat. The game's really, really the, getting tighter and tighter, and the time's running short for this for uh, Portland. I'm excited, but I'm not jumping out of my seat because my luck, I'll probably break something considering we're about <laughs> 10 feet off the ground in our commentary position. Ball goes out of bounds in the pocket and we'll have a throw in. As you can see, so our boundary umpires, a lot of the teams, they volunteer to do the, the boundary umpires. That's Lizzie Even from the Minnesota Freeze who throws the ball back into the play. One-on-one -on -one contest. Weinstock in there against McEachern and uh, won the ball momentarily. That one is tough as uh, picking it up again is Mooney. Mooney Whoop. throws it onto the right. A Centering ball. Mark oh, nicely Warden. by Warden. Well done. 
Great awareness by Mooney and a great job of leading the ball by Warden and he'll have a chance to cut the score even more. Who is this team? The I momentum know. has just changed big time in the last three minutes. And it's Hand great. Handball off the Mooney. It's great to see. So we've but, had a snap, it's a behind. But so it's a behind. A probably a little rush there, Brian. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's a good idea, but sometimes you have to have the confidence to take that. So second yep. behind for Portland. That takes them on the one, two, eight. It's a 10 point game now. Still two straight kicks is the difference, but Portland, they need to try and get, uh, they need to try and get that. Yeah, f five minutes to go or thereabouts, counting down. So still not desperation stage. Yeah, we're still not close. desperate. We're, get, we're getting there, but I'll tell you what, Portland's had the had the territorial and the possession here in this second half. They just got to make something of it as uh, they are, uh, there's Gabe who is the goal kicker and now going out for a lead, looking for it and calling for it as number four for Portland unlisted. Still looking for man. Now they put that one up in high but right at Campbell, mm. Colby Campbell. And he's had a big game, oh. hasn't he? He's had a day out, and it's just the first game. It's just the first game. Sangara came across. He kicks that one up high, and his maw, no, almost marked in there by Coyle. Ball goes to ground. Ball in the air. Picked up by uh, Traxel Tal. Finds Sangara. Whoop, that one's going to pop straight up in the air. Who wants it? Who's got it? It's popped forward. Coventry, though, off the volley. He will play that one out into the center of the ground. Maw, no, almost off by Hotter. Weinstock couldn't pick it up. And then, oh, oh that's going to be a high tackle, though. Yes, it is. Monstered, I think. I think it was more a case of mistiming than any malice. Justin Elliott, yeah, that, yeah, a lot of that, in a lot of cases, that is, and it's a 50-meter penalty. So when the ball is marked, or when a penalty is called, the ball has to be given right away back to the to the person who's kicking it, or uh, the player cannot go over where the mark was called. So if that happens, the kick is moved up 50 meters, and that may be a costly mistake considering the momentum. So here is Sean McEckern. He's going to put this one close. I don't think he's going to have the leg. Definitely outside the range. They're milling tight in front of the gold square, but Bishop Portland is, just let the pressure valve off there. Bishop is looming, and he's uh, he's guarded in there because they've seen him. They've seen them uh, use him as an option. Instead, they go in short for Lewis. Lewis dribbles one along the, along the ground. Portland is able to clear it out. Tyabji is there. Look out, Tyabji on his left foot, but he put a little bit too much arc. Oh, Sham Sangara with a nice mark. Uh, it's, I mean, this is his. He's just got to keep his head down. He's been playing super well. Put himself in a great position to take that mark. With time running down, this might ice it. Sangara. Ball game. Goal to Sham Sangara. His second of the, or I believe that's his first. Third goal of the day for Sacramento. No, that takes him second on. Sangara, second it is half. second, yep. 3-6-24 for the Suns as the lead is now 16 points and with less than... Probably insurmountable now, Brian. Yep. I think Portland would still play hard through the through the hoop. Oh, if I would expect I would expect that they would. And they've shown some good things to carry through the rest of the day, that's for sure. That is. As you see uh, the setup. Not much in that one. I, I don't like when players snap their legs like that, but when you're so in close, I mean, it's not going to matter. So second goal for Sangara, third for the Suns. It's now 24-8 to eight as we are in the dying embers of this one. Portland's going to need to find a way to come back against Seattle a little bit later on, but we'll see what happens. Here is uh, Hotter, who will kick the ball up into the middle. And uh, picking it up and then stripped. Oh, nice job to dispossess them. They go back. Little handball up a little one-two. They're just a, a little bit of desperation. But Weinstock has it, picks it forward, digging in after it as Ty of G. It pinballs around, just getting his hand to it and then punching, just flailing at anything to get the ball. Uh, I think he was obviously he was aiming for the ball, and you could see getting up there uh, 15, which was Kendall Hutchings against Luke Mooney for Portland. Just flailing at the ball, nothing malfeasant in that. No. So the boundary throw-in, long throw-in, tap to ground, picked up by, uh, oh, good, good shepherd by Aguirre. And the ball goes in short. Again, that's uh, Boyer, who's been all over the place. That one is kicked up high, heading towards us. And Coventry comes back and takes an over-the-shoulder mark. So here is Coventry, the former Seattle Grizzly, the former North Carolina oh, know, Tiger. Yeah. Looking for a lead and finding one out into the middle, but it's all red jumpers. 
And it's marked again by Campbell, that or by Cal Colby Campbell, who that must be is about his 10th mark. And I believe this is disposal about number 20 that he's had. Yeah. But here it is, a long one. Little oh, line. nice mark over yeah. the top again. And Campbell by just Hutchings. general, general bulliness to yeah. just general shoulders. Hutchings has a man in investor on the near side. He goes up on that far side, almost marked over the top. Portland has numbers if they want it. They can ball it into the middle, and Wright will get it to clear out on the near side. Two on one. I, Aguirre with a volleyball tap. Oh, and then that's got to be a high tackle, and it isn't. Play on as Weinstock. He's cleaned up high. Play on, says the umpire. Handball's in for Aguirre, who he's cleaned up. He's dispossessed. Play on, says the umpire, as he didn't have clean possession. That one is handled over to Portland's number two. Playing that low game again. Here Brian. we go again, and then it's uh, Weinstock who plays that one into the middle. What can they do on this ground attack? It's going to oh. roll. It's a two-on-one contest, but back to get oh. it. But these tabbies claim that's got to be holding the ball. He's going to call a high tackle. Oh, it's a high tackle. Oh, unlucky. Very unlucky. But I, I have to say the umps have been consistent oh, yeah. on that today. So. They have been, and, and that's all you can ask. Here we go, the replay, just, just out of the edge of our picture. More of a steer throw than anything. Uh, yeah, that, but that's definitely a high tackle and rightly called, as you said, Anthony, by our officials. And back in the middle, there's Weinstock oh, up, but not the greatest that, of kicks. Yeah, he'd take that again if yep. he had a chance. Mark. So unlucky, but they're playing that low game, and they've got some they've got some chops here. So Quoka with the long kick. His uh, sister, Loray, plays uh, for the women's team we just saw. And then here is uh, Aguiari, who's there. He pushes it down to the ground. Everyone down mushroom farming. That almost looked like a rugby scrum where it was hooked out. And then it comes right to Elliot. Elliot just got rid of it. And then uh, off the side of the boot goes uh, Boyer out to the near side, just with his left foot over towards us. And the ball will bounce out of bounds for a boundary throw. And it did just find the field of play. Waning moments of this one, Sacramento up 16 points. Uh, or no, they've called it out on the full. How was that right in front of me and I missed that? No, it, yeah. It was a boundary throw in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I know I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> that, so it's a boundary yeah, throw in. So we, yeah, we've got the uh, the line umpire ready here, so we'll, we'll just retake that. That's uh, Ray Ray Hale from Minnesota, who will throw the ball back in the play. As we mentioned, the, the players are, are vo they volunteer, and it's it's a requirement that they're supposed to. Uh, yeah, all, all all the clubs supporting each other to make sure the game's got without a hitch. Manning, over the shoulder. Uh, handballed over to Hutchings, Touchings. who plays it into the middle. And here comes uh, Aguiari. Whoop, uh, he forgot something. And then he is, I believe that's going to be low, and it is. Yeah, so, forgot his feet, forgot the ball, one of the two. So remember, it's between the knee and the shoulder. We've seen a high, we've seen a low. And now, you're, now we're good to go. As uh, that one is punched away before Campbell could try and get another one. Over in that far pocket, uh, Bishop's going to pick it up, and then he is bullied off the ball in there by oh, Wright. Lo yeah, and Lachlan Bowlby came in with his shoulder there too, really put some heat on. So good to see. I know uh, Lachlan Bowlby just came down to the club uh, this summer, mm -hmm. and so he's new in the area. Yep. And so he's been a good addition from uh, from Sydney. Yep. Yeah, it's good to it's good to have uh, some of the Aussies, even even from rugby land, uh, or or rugby league land. Out to the near side, they come. Tau on as Coventry, who says no, 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 not today, and it's out of bounds for a boundary throw in. He looked a little bit like Dikembe Mutombo on that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that is the siren. So they played through to the end. But I'll tell you what, the Suns really, really performed well. Uh, played the high game well, got in the air well, strung those longer kicks and marks together. And uh, Portland kept fighting. We talked about them being gritty. They did, and, and it's and it's interesting against this type of team. You know, Sacramento really stepped up defensively uh, to uh, push the put the pressure on, uh, but Sacramento had an answer. And uh, on going back in the other direction, you know, the Steelheads tried to mount a couple of attacks. They did. Well, now if you look at it from the Suns, uh, they finished with three goals out of nine scoring chances. And if you're Matt Bishop, you know, you're happy that they won the game, and you're happy that you got all those scoring. And a couple of those were rushed behinds. But you also, if you you they're going into this really tough game against Seattle a little bit later on you got to tell your you got to tell your boys that you got to you got to straighten those kicks out and you got to take advantage of your chances but definitely uh, Portland cut down that time and space for them in the second half yep and they just got uh, the Suns just got the running early and uh, it was going to be a tough claw back from there but that that goal from Sangara just really 
shut the gate on Portland there a few minutes from time. Indeed, and the Suns with a handsome victory. Both of these teams will have one more game uh, we'll, later on, which we'll bring to you uh, at another time. But uh, we thank you for joining us once again for more Australian rules football action, the USAFL Western Regionals. For Anthony Lally and everyone else who's brought to you today's game from Salem, this is Brian Barish. Have a great day wherever you are. Support for tonight's program was provided by MAPS Credit Union, premier sponsor of Salem-Kaiser Schools. Visit one of our convenient locations in the Willamette Valley or our website, mapcu.com. And by Les Schwab Tire Centers, doing the right thing since 1952. Experience the Les Schwab difference at your neighborhood Les Schwab Tire Center or visit us on the web at leschwab.com.